we have a little, a <laughs> little delay uh, in our screen, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the first number so we don't get behind. Uh, I, I remember this is the 50s. I mean, tonight we're reliving the 50s. I had a good time in the 50s, and uh, so I'm going to rock out a little bit. And uh, but. I've had some requests, and uh, I had a lot of requests for a gospel song, and so I think that would be very appropriate to start with a gospel song today, and uh, I'm going to sing Precious Lord, Take My Hand, double entendre. Just let Bill in when he comes. <laughs> something up on the, the keys up on the screen. I'll just tell you that when I, I started with gospel and uh, when I started to school, somebody had a radio and I heard secular music for the first time and it rocked my world. <laughs> And I said, I have to learn, <clears throat> I have to play that music. But the, the song that stuck with me the most that I wanted to learn first was the Boogie Woogie. And so uh, I did. Don't start <laughs> I know it, I know it. <laughs> so I did, I did find a piano in school and I did learn how to play the boogie woogie and it actually changed my life because it got me noticed and it got me a lot of opportunity that I otherwise would never have had. And the kids always wanted to hear the boogie woogie. I played it ad nauseum and uh, so we, um, I'll play the boogie in a minute, but 
the local clubs began to hear about it and so they would ask me to play a program for them and they all wanted the boogie woogie and a program would be maybe three or four songs and so I would of course play the boogie woogie but I had to have a little repertoire and so they did not want old MacDonald had a farm so I had to listen I borrowed that radio and I listened to all the genres country rock blues show tunes and uh, I learned if I could hum it I could play it so I I put all those songs in my toolbox. So when I went out to do a program, I would do the boogie woogie, but then I would, if I, I would see what they responded to. I was not confined to a program. I could, I had all the different genres, so I could, if they weren't responding suitably, I would just kind of, uh, segue to another song or even another genre and uh, until I got the response I wanted because I didn't want an obligatory applause. I wanted uh, a vigorous ovation. <laughs> so I just kept on until I found their hot button. I might I might sing a Sophie Tucker song. It doesn't require a lot of hand work. Are we close? Whoa. All right. I'm going to sing a Sophie Tucker song some of these days. You all remember that? You all know that? <laughs> Some of these days You're gonna miss me, honey Come one of these days You're gonna be so lonely You'll miss my hugging You'll miss me, honey, when I'm far away. Well, you'll be lonely for me only. Well, you know, honey, you had your day. Look out. Them fingers are slower 
down. <laughs> All right, so um, you remember the infancy of television. We had three networks and uh, they didn't even have all day programming. <clears throat> so some of the local channels, lo local stations, um, created their own programming to fill in some of those slots. And uh, so they produced some local celebrities. If you wanted to be on television here, you had to do country. So I'm gonna walk the floor over you. Association, uh, and he is just everywhere doing everything. Well, he also is a musician. So, Bill's parents gave him a banjo when he was 13, and so when he was 22, he took uh, some banjo lessons for a year, and then he put it away. And he's dragged it back out here for <laughs> at Epworth. Bill, after he got to Epworth, he got his banjo back out. He now volunteers at the Banjo Museum in um, Guthrie, Bricktown. Oh, pardon. And uh, he plays for guests there. And so he's going to play for us tonight, today. Bill Elliott. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, tonight I'm going to be playing Dueling Banjos. Now, the other banjo player that's supposed to be here tonight couldn't come. So, I'm going to need particip audience participation. I'm going to play a part, and then in your mind, I want you to think of the other part that, I'm, that needs to be played, okay? So, okay. just, uh, you know, that way it's not like just silence. So, let's try this here.
play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the time I was knee high, I was told, you're going into show business. You've got a career in the music business. You're going to be rich and famous and everything's going to be wonderful. And I bought in, but nobody ever told me, how do you get into show business? Where do you go to get into show business? When do you go? And exactly what are you going to do in show business? Uh, I knew I would maybe give it a go, <clears throat> but I would have to support myself while I figured that out. So I took business courses, and as it turns out, I took to business like I took to music. So I came to Oklahoma City, and I got a really good job in the business sector. So I didn't intend to go anywhere. I, that was my career. But people kept saying, you've got to go into the music business. So I decided I didn't want to one day say woulda, coulda, shoulda. So I called, I decided to call a talent agency. And so I called the top talent agency and I said, I play the piano and sing and I need an agent. So they made an appointment for me to come the next week and uh, audition. So I went to the audition and the agent said to me, I'm probably not gonna sign another singer. I've got a, a stable of top talent and unless you're better than all of them or different from them, I'm probably not interested in signing you. But I decided to audition with Up a Lazy River. I was under contract <laughs> and he said your first booking will be background music background um, 
he said, uh, you know, you do a good audition, but I really don't know your stage presence or your repertoire, and there's some things I need to learn about you. So your first booking will be background music, and um, you won't be the focus. There, You won't be mic'd. So you're just there to, it's a corporate event, and you're just there to enhance the party, but um, you're not gonna rock out or sing, you're just gonna do background music. Can you do that? I said, yes. <clears throat> so he said, there are three rules. Rule number one is you get there on time looking really good. Rule number two is you don't bring anything with you. You don't bring sheet music. You don't bring lyrics. You don't bring a, a list of songs. You don't bring a playlist. You bring nothing. It's just nothing between you and the audience. And uh, um, you, if you have to bring a crutch, you're not ready for prime time. So can you do that? I said, yes, because you've got to have two hour show right there. I said, yes. So uh, he said, uh, the other thing is you can't play anything like the sheet music or the record. You have to put the Patsy on it. So uh, sheet music, I can get 100 people to play that um, for scale. So you have to, you have to, yep. Yeah. Are you telling me something, Franz? Move it over. Move a little bit over. Okay. Ah. <laughs> so, at any rate, um, he said uh, uh, you can't play it like anybody else. You have to play your interpretation of it, the way it's given to you and the way it comes from you. So I'm going to play a background music with the Patsy on it. I decided to play Misty for this one. was the highest paid entertainer in the world. And so um, being a flamboyant pianist wasn't a bad thing. But I said to my agent, look, 
I can play background music, and it's, I see I can make a living at it, but it won't buy me a villa on the Riviera. So book me someplace I can show off. So he booked me at a military base. Oh yeah. <laughs> the era that I was, you know, honing my skills in, and uh, I couldn't get my foot up on the piano, so uh, I, uh, I said to, by now I had kind of gotten a feel for the music business, and uh, I said to my agent, this isn't going to work for me because uh, a villa on the Riviera wouldn't do you any good because these guys, uh, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis, Fats Domino, uh, Ray Charles, those guys spent 300 nights a year in a hotel and uh, with a <clears throat> medication. So I said, I'm, the music business is really not for me. And he said, well, let's try it. Let me try it with a record. See if we can get you a recording contract and then you wouldn't have to travel. So he called Decker Records and they sent a rep down. And uh, long story short, I signed a recording contract and then I had to find a song to record, which is another 30 minute issue. So we ended up uh, recording Ain't Misbehaving. Ain't misbehaving 
saving my love for you. of records, you check it out with the DJs, because in the 50s, the DJs, the, the, uh, they ruled the world. The disc jockeys ruled the world. If they didn't play your record, throw it in the trash. It wasn't going to get played anywhere else. So my agent took the demo to the top DJ in the area, and he played it for him, and he said, do you like it? And the DJ said, yeah, I like it. And he said, will you play it? And the DJ said, yeah, I'll play it for some payola. And so it was the beginning, really, of payola, which is illegal. It's a bribe. And uh, the figure I heard was 150 plays for 20,000, but that's one market. So I didn't have any money, and uh, my record company wasn't going to take a chance on an unknown. So at any rate, I said to my agent, this business stinks. I think I'll just stick to the, <laughs> stick to the business. So at any rate, in my storage room somewhere, I have a very expensive record of Ain't Misbehaving. <laughs> But I'll tell you who ain't misbehaving and who has never, I'm sure, never misbehaved. And that's our next performer, Brita Moore. And those of you who don't know, most of you do, but, but Brita plays for Sunday school every Sunday morning in the chapel. She plays in the household when they need her at Sunday school. She does sing along pre-COVID, sing along over in assisted living. She's a volunteer extraordinaire. And uh, Frida was the daughter of a preacher's kid. She's the daughter of a preacher, the sister of a preacher, the granddaughter of a preacher, and she married a preacher. And uh, so when she was seven years old, they put her in music classes. And uh, so she took piano and harp and organ and violin. At any rate, I, I want you all to hear her today. Uh, I would like for Frita to come up and play a, a song for us today. Frita.
Okay, well, we were going to do I'll Fly Away with Bill. I don't know what happened. Bill's kind of been elusive today. <laughs> when I said he's everywhere. <laughs> so um, come up and lead us. We're going to do I'll Fly Away. Uh, you play the piano. I'm going to play the percussion. Okay. I'm going to play the percussion. The percussion. I don't know where Bill went. Okay, here you go. So everybody, listen, and you, listen guys, give us something, you know, I mean, tap your feet, clap your hands, and enjoy, move around a little bit, sing. You, you can sing in your mask. And you only have to remember, I'll fly away. <laughs> banjo you all heard a while ago you heard it again all right we got a couple of more songs and before I close and you know I'm gonna close with Georgia on my mind because that's my favorite song and I'm gonna sing a torch song I, I probably uh, it should be against the law for an 82 year old person to sing a torch song because the, remember, the vocal cords go the way of the hair and the eyes and the ears. <laughs> and so, but I love this song and uh, I'm going to sing it anyway. Um, but you don't know me. Yes. 
just said goodbye. I watched you walk away. Someone by your side, and you will never know how much I love you so. But you don't know me. Upbeat jazz piano piece. Uh, so I'm going to uh, do, uh, what am I going to do? Pennies from Heaven. to play the 25 of their best friends <laughs> and thank our our guest performers who, wherever Bill is and thank you Frida Frida's wonderful my friend and yours and uh, just I want to thank you guys for all your support and uh, afterwards we'll stay out of your way so you can get out without bottlenecking so Georgia on my mind Yeah. <laughs> 